be forewarned as I'm about to review a very bloody and gory film. But if it makes you feel better, I won't be utilizing any gory video clips or gory pictures or even trailer footage. Even compared to most of the other R-rated films I've reviewed for this channel, this film is on a next level and received an NR no rating and required any audience member to show their ID before going in. The film in question here is Terrifier 3, and the Terrifier phenom is real. What started off as a small little torture fest film in 2016 has risen to be the biggest phenom in horror right now. I didn't know about Terrifier until Terrifier 2 came out in 2022. I remember becoming aware of Terrifier during the fall season of 2022 when Terrifier 2 was coming out, and hearing the enthusiasm behind the second film and how it was doing well at the box office. The key was also hearing that it was a pretty f***ed up film. I shortly then had a friend who corrupted me into seeing Terrifier 2 in the theaters, but to be best prepared of course, I decided to check out the first film. And I remember watching it and thinking that, well, you know, its initial gore scenes are definitely pushing it, but you know, this clown is relatively just like any other slasher out there. But then it got to the scene where he had a naked woman upside down and proceeded to saw her in half from her private parts. And yeah, my reaction was about what everyone else's probably was, thinking, holy f this is the most out there pushing the limits gore sequence I've ever seen. It's an iconic scene that really sold that movie and the rest of the film had plenty of blood splattered goodies to keep gore fans satisfied. I have another friend who said it's her comfort film. There's different ways to comfort people, that's for sure. And then it was time for Terrifier 2 in the theaters and that film was a bigger budgeted version of part one that was super satisfying in so many ways. Personality wise it took Art the Clown to the next level and delivered on more kills, guts and gore and oddly enough a lot of laughs. That's the great dynamic of Terrifier 2 and Art the Clown in general, is that he's doing the most hideous and repulsive things to his victims, but somehow he's legit funny while or before he's doing it. He just has these moments where whether it's a facial expression, reaction, or just interaction with characters, that'll have you legit laughing. I mean, that scene in part 2 where he's messing around with Sienna in the costume store by wearing the glasses still cracks me up when thinking about it. Terrifier 2 would have been the perfect film had it been like 20 or 30 minutes shorter. The film just went on for way too long, I mean it's basically like 2 hours and 20 minutes with no credits, and that's way too long for any kind of horror film if you ask me. The final 20 minutes left me exhausted and legit terrified, but not in the way I think they were hoping. But years of the cult phenom building brings us to Terrifier 3 just 2 years later. But unlike part 2, which I didn't watch until weeks after it initially came out in theaters, I checked out Terrifier 3 on its official opening Friday night. It was the best way to gauge what a phenom this franchise is now as I was in a packed auditorium on its official opening Friday night. Terrifier 3 sees Art the Clown continuing his reign of chaos during the most wonderful time of year. While all this is going on, Sienna is visiting some family of hers during the Christmas season to hopefully cope with the trauma that fighting Art left her with but obviously that's not an easy thing to get over. It should be noted that I went into this film essentially completely blind, not having seen a single trailer, TV spot, or even promotional image. All I had seen was the main poster, heard the film took place during Christmas time, and saw the Art the Clown Christmas bucket that they were selling at the theaters. I would definitely say this heightened the experience, but it's not a deal breaker when it comes to the things I'm going to say about this film. You'll definitely be in best position to understand the story if you've at least seen Terrifier 2, but the film does a solid job at summing up what Sienna is going through so it's not a deal breaker when it comes to enjoyment. The dynamic of having Art's brutal antics take place during the Christmas time is a great contrast to just the horrendous things he's doing to his victims. The iconic Christmas colors are of course green and red, but in this film you see a lot more red than green that's for sure. These sequences though are nicely paced and you thankfully, or maybe unthankfully, never have to go too long without seeing someone have their Christmas plans ruined. In between these killer antics, I love the movie's choice to follow Sienna again, rather than start anew with a new protagonist in typical slasher sequel style. I thought the actress who played Sienna, Lauren Lavera, was amazing. The character obviously dealt with a lot of f***ed up stuff from Terrifier 2. And you just see this beautiful pain behind the character, even in the moments where she's trying to be happy. The movie definitely puts her on iconic slasher film female protagonist level, like Laurie from Halloween and Nancy from Nightmare on Elm Street. Art the Clown has the same beautiful dynamic of horror and humor, and well, yeah, it's quite the dynamic. 
Needless to say, you'll never look at someone in a Santa suit the same way. The film oddly cleared up what his ethos and rules are when it comes to who he kills. And it turns out, he has none. Doesn't matter how old you are, if you're in a crowd of people, or even if you're an animal. If you ever see him, you're probably f***. The ending of the opening sequence in this film is just horrifying to think about. Much of art was a mystery in parts 1 and 2. All you knew is that he was a demon clown with a twisted sense of humor. Part 3 dips its toe in creating mythology for him in terms of what's really going on. And I can't say I loved what exactly was explained here, but it's just a tease It doesn't really take up too much of the film. Now in part 2, we saw Art team up and work with a demon clown girlfriend of his. Here in part 3, he has another partner dynamic, but this time it's with Vicky, the victim with the mauled face from part 1, who by the end of part 2 had a new, interesting working dynamic with him. It's just a repulsive character to look at, and has some legit disgusting scenes to witness. But the way the film plays out is actually way more of an actual Joker and Harley Quinn dynamic between the two than anything we've seen in the live action movies. The kills of course are what audiences are coming to see, and in totality they're on the level of part 2 and I would say are actually a step up if that's possible. There are two types of sequences when it comes to when Art is terrifying his victims. The first type would be the scenes where he's playing with his victims and is legit funny before he kills them. It's just the weirdest dynamic because he will legit make various characters in the film and the audience laugh. And it almost sets you up to maybe you think that, oh, well maybe things will end okay for the characters in this scene. It's just a great dynamic that is this series selling point for me and I'm guessing a lot of the audience. The second type of kill scenes are the scenes where art isn't f***ing around and just goes in knives or chainsaws blazing. There's a different level of uncomfortability to these scenes because there's no laughter to get you through it. Now, I talked about how the first film really sold itself and is iconic for that upside down naked girl saw kill. This film has what's considered to be the spiritual successor to that scene, this time involving two victims instead of one. And it has to be the most uncomfortable face covering gore sequence I've ever seen in theaters. What he did to the victim that wound it up on the ground here got a legit holy sh OMG, what the f yikes, ouch reaction from the audience. When the money shot of the sequence happened, I went back in my seat and said, and I quote, It's a scene that I would never want to watch again, but I would love to see a complete audience reaction from people in the theaters, because I'm pretty sure it's the first thing that many were thinking about coming out. I was sweating when the scene was done. It was that bad. Or good. Depends on your perspective, I guess. Easily the worst part about what Art does to his victims, and this is for all three films, is how while he kills you in brutal fashion, he somehow leaves you alive enough to see exactly how they're going out, and there is zero dignity that he leaves you when he's done with you. Unlike Terrifier 2, which was about 2 hours and 20 minutes, this movie is about 2 hours flat and has excellent pacing and balancing out the kill sequences, Art's antics, and Sienna's story. Terrifier 2's final confrontation just dragged on way longer than it should have. Terrifier 3's climax is perfect. It helps that the movie was about 30 minutes shorter, but things just come together in super satisfying fashion in the end. There was a cliche moment during the climax that I wasn't crazy about, but there was still plenty of great stuff to deliver a fantastic finish to this film. For what this movie was going for, it was an absolutely perfect experience. It certainly helps seeing with a big crowd, but there's just a tremendous amount of fun to be had here. Certainly not for everybody, in fact there's some stuff that really makes me uncomfortable when thinking about it. But under my new rating system, this gets my first ever f yeah rating. The only thing that worries me about a film like this is the effect that it could have on people later. As much fun as this character can be at times, if you were to ever see him in public or see someone dressed like him, you would get the f out of there. I was legit terrified when I got out of my auditorium and theater and saw an Art the Clown duo outside the theater. Oh, no, no. No. <laughs> Naturally, as you get older, you think about how things can go wrong with movies like this and you just hope the fun that this film has is limited to on the screen. 
Given the crowd turnout that I saw for this film, the Terrifier Phenom is sure to be bigger than ever for part four because this is currently the franchise when it comes to horror. So that'll do it for this review of Terrifier 3. If you somehow made it to the end of this review, thank you for watching. <laughs>